Alright, this is Block 6, the Great Depression, Section 5, after the 100 days, uh, with a section starting Dr. Francis E. Townsend. The difficult economic times uh, in the United States led to a number of characters, uh, shall we say, um, who used the bad times to kind of advocate things that were a little bit on the extreme side. Um, and we're going to talk about three of them. There's the second one. Uh, here's the first guy. This is, um, this is Dr. Francis E. Townsend. And Dr. Townsend uh, was a Californian, and his plan, if you will, um, to get the country out of the Great Depression was to give old people a lot of money. And Townsend's plan kind of presaged, you know, what we have today, uh, so with Social Security and Medicare. But Townsend said that every senior citizen in the United States should get, I think it was $200 a month, I'll check the exact figure for you, $200 a week. Uh, Townsend said that every senior in America should be given the sum of $200 a week, that they were legally responsible, they were required to spend that money every week. Now, every old person in the United States getting $800 a month uh, would have bankrupted the United States uh, Treasury. But Townsend, uh, that was his proposal. He thought that people spending money, uh, especially old people spending money, uh, would revive the economy and bring the country out of the Depression. He was kind of harmless. The next two characters are less so. This is Father Charles Coughlin. Uh, he is a Catholic priest. Uh, he is from the state of Wisconsin. And he starts out as a big time supporter of Roosevelt's New Deal. And he says that the New Deal is going to be used to help the poor. The New Deal is going to be used uh, you know, to have everyone cooperate. Your typical progressive belief, Father Charles Coughlin believed that. But as, the, as time went by, and um, the country was not recovering from the Great Depression, Coughlin became a little bit more extreme. Uh, he started saying that the New Deal was not going far enough, uh, that you know, the poor people, the workers, were still being you know, exploited by companies, by corporations. Coughlin starts saying that Roosevelt himself is a tool of uh, international uh, finance and international capitalism. He starts saying, he starts making the argument that the Jews are behind all of the bad times. And he starts to go on these populist, undemocratic, anti-Semitic rants. Uh, that it's the, the fault of the, the Jew Roosevelt uh, for you know, bringing the country to this plight, for not helping the people. Um, he advocates things that are very popular today. He advocates a federal minimum wage, minimum work uh, hours, you know, recognition of unions, but he also goes down into the, the feverish swamps of extremism uh, with his anti-Semitism, with his belief that Roosevelt was some kind of capitalist tool. And finally, um, the church had kind of had enough of Father, Father Coughlin, and they, uh, they shut him up. Uh, Coughlin's, you can see from this picture that the new medium of radio, which is not entirely new in the 1930s, but the medium of radio allows Father Coughlin's message to spread far and wide. The man has millions of listeners a week tune in to his, you know, he's, he's very intelligent, he's very cogent, he's very well spoken, um, and they tune in every week to hear Father Coughlin, you know, give his, his sermons on the air. And they start out, like I said, in support of Roosevelt, uh, and in support of kind of the mainstream progressivism that Roosevelt, you know, was the front man for, uh, but they, with, within a few years, kind of veer off into the fever swamps of conspiracy and anti-Semitism and things like that. Our next character is Governor Huey Long. Governor Huey Long is probably the greatest threat to democracy uh, that an American state ever faced. He is the incredibly popular governor of Louisiana. And he comes to power on a left-wing populist platform that pretty much says we are going to take all the money from the rich citizens of Louisiana and redistribute, uh, redistribute it to the poor common people of Louisiana. 
His policy he called share the wealth. Um, and he passed laws uh, in Louisiana, confiscatory taxation, and he was well on his way to achieving his goals of redistributing wealth in, in uh, Louisiana. Which is fine, you can theoretically do that within de the democratic tradition. But then Huey Long kind of moves to make himself pretty much dictator of Louisiana. Uh, he fills important government positions uh, with his own supporters. He gets rid of judges that do not agree with him. He makes sure that uh, people are paid off to vote the way they are supposed to vote. Huey Long comes very, very close to actually establishing a personal dictatorship uh, in the state of Louisiana with the support of all the people. That, you know, rich people are never popular people uh, in politics. So Huey Long uses his, you know, his arguments, his railings against the wealthy to get an incredible amount of popular support in the poor state of Louisiana. He has his policy of share the wealth. He moves to strengthen himself uh, in the state of Louisiana. He has dreams of challenging President Roosevelt for the Democratic national uh, nomination in 1936. A true demagogue, excellent speaker, um, a populist, incredibly popular with the people of Louisiana and a lot of American people in general. He was assassinated. Um, that there was a judge, to make a long story short, uh, there was a judge that he was trying to remove from power, you know, because the judge opposed him. And one day, walking through the state house, the judge's nephew or son, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't remember exactly, somebody in the judge's family stepped out and shot. Uh, Huey Long, whose nickname was the Kingfish. Um, and the Kingfish died in 1935 uh, before he could challenge Roosevelt. Roosevelt was worried about Huey Long. Uh, he was worried about a political challenge from Huey Long, and he was worried about what he was doing down in the state of Louisiana. But once his personal magnetism faded, um, Louisiana kind of became a regular old state and a regular old government uh, once again. These three, Township and Coughlin and Long, represent extremism that never happened in the United States. That if you want to look at the real success of Roosevelt, Roosevelt changed the course of American history without being an extremist. Roosevelt, changed, Roosevelt prevented people like Coughlin and Long from coming to power. Um, that the United States was in such a terrible economic situation that it certainly was reasonable for people to follow, you know, the anti-Semitism of Father Coughlin or the, you know, the, the almost communism of Huey Long. Roosevelt's success lies in keeping the American people away from that extremism as popular as it was among a large group of Americans.